One of the many applications of matrices in linear algebra is solving linear system. Now in my augmented matrix in this particular example, you will notice that my main diagonal is already 1, 1, 1, and the corresponding numbers under our main diagonals are all 0. When this particular matrix is given in linear algebra, we know that solving a linear system with an augmented matrix similar to this one is easy to solve because when we change it into a linear system using back substitution, we'll be able to find the value of x, y, and z, which is x equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1, and z is equal to positive 2. However, not all augmented matrix are given like this. Sometimes, or most of the times, the matrix that we are working on are matrices similar to example number two. Now, in this particular augmented matrix, if we change this into a linear system, you will notice that back substitution will no longer work to solve for the solutions of our linear system. So when this particular matrix is given, the other way to solve for the solutions of this particular linear system is using the elementary row operation, which is our lesson for today. Now, the elementary row operation is an algorithm used to solve system of linear equations in an augmented matrix form. So these are the operations that we're going to learn today. We have three types of elementary row operations. The first type is interchanging two rows. So that's our first operation involving our matrix or augmented matrix. The second type of operation is multiplying a row by a non-zero constant. And the third type is adding a multiple of one row to another row. Now these are the elementary row operations that we're going to use in our examples in a little while. Now the reason why the operation is called elementary row operations because we're just going to work out these operations on each of the row of a given matrix. We have here three matrices and we're going to perform type 1, type 2, and type 3 elementary row operation. Now before we do our operations, I want you to take a look at the three matrices. On matrix 1, you will notice that the main diagonal is interchanged. So our goal here is to have the diagonal or the main diagonal to be 1, 1, and 1. So for example number 1, example number 2, and example number 3, all the main diagonals or the two of the main diagonals are not in form 1, 1, and 1. So the first matrix, what we're going to do is we're going to use type 1 elementary row operation to achieve our goal of creating a matrix with a main diagonal of 1, 1, 1. So to do that, to achieve this particular task, we are going to interchange row 3 and row 1. And by doing that, you will see that our new matrix is now an identity matrix wherein the main diagonal is 1, 1, and 1. And this is the notation that we will use in our elementary row operation for this lesson. So R3 interchanged to R1. So that is type 1 and type 2. For this particular matrix, what we need to do, if you'll notice, the second row, we have 0, negative 3, and 0. And if we want our main diagonal to be 1, 1, 1, what we need to do is to change negative 3 into 1. And to do that, we just need to multiply um, negative 1 third to row 2 so that negative 3 will change into 1. So now our new matrix will be an identity matrix wherein the ma main diagonal is all 1. So what we did is we um, multiplied negative 1 third to row 2 to achieve this particular result. Now for type 3, even though we already have a main diagonal of 1, 1, 1. We still want to make this as an identity matrix. And by doing type 3 elementary row operation, we'll be able to achieve that. And to do that, we're going to multiply 
a number to row 3 and add it to row 1 to change it into 0. And to do that, what we need to do is to multiply negative 7 to row 3 and add it to row 1 so that row 1 will change into 1, 0, 0. And that is our third type of operation. So multiplying negative 7 to row 3 and add it to row 1 will give us the identity matrix. Now before we proceed to our next example, I want you to take a look at the last row in our third matrix. Notice that even though I multiplied negative 7 to row 3, I still did not change my row. Now in this example, we have a linear system. And in this linear system, our task is to solve for the solution of our linear system. And to do that, we're going to change or we're going to use the elementary row operation to be able to find the values of x, y, and z. So the first task is to change the linear system into an augmented matrix. Notice that I'm using an augmented matrix and not just the coefficient matrix because our goal is to solve for the value of x, y, and z. Now in this particular augmented matrix, you will see that our main diagonal is not 1, 1, 1, and uh, the numbers below our main diagonals is 0, 2, and negative 5. And our goal is to change our main diagonal into 1, 1, 1, and uh, the rest of the numbers under the main diagonals to change into 0. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to do a type 3 elementary row operation on my first move and what I'm going to do is to multiply negative 2 to row 1 and add it to row 3. So once again, we are not changing row 1, we are just changing row 3. But we're still performing the operation for the first row. So when we do that, when we multiply negative 2 to row 1, we'll have negative 2 4, negative 6, and negative 18. And then I will add this up to row 3 so that it will change my third row. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 4 plus negative 5 will give me negative 1. Negative 6 plus 5 will give me negative 1. And negative 18 plus 17 is negative 1. Now once again, our first row will not change, but our third row will now be 0, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1 using the elementary row operation. So our new transformed matrix will look like this. Now, you will see that I, do, I still don't have a main diagonal of 1, 1, 1, and I still have negative 1 under my main diagonal. So my next move will be to perform um, type 1, or type 2 um, elementary row operation by adding row 2 and row 3. So when I do that, my row 2 will still be row 2, but row 3 will now change with the sum of row 2 and row 3. So now 0 plus 0 will give me 0 because I'm adding row 2 and row 3. I'm also adding 1 and negative 1, which gives me 0, and 3 minus 1 is giving me 2, and 5 minus 1 is giving me 4. So this is my new row 3. Once again, row 2 is not changing, it's just row 3 that we are changing in this particular operation. So our new matrix is now 1, negative 2, 3, 9, 0, 1, 3, 5, and the new row 3 is 0, 0, 2, and 4. Now our last step is to change the last diagonal, or 2, in our row 3 to change into a 1, so that we'll have a main diagonal of 1, 1, 1. And by doing type 2 elementary row operation, which is multiplying row 3 by 1 half, we are now changing our row 3 into 0, 0, 1, and 2. So now, you will see that our new transform matrix has a main diagonal of 1, 1, 1, and the numbers under our main diagonal is now 0. Now, we can still perform um, second set of uh, elementary row operation by changing the upper um, corner of our main diagonal to be 0, 0, 0. But in this particular case, what we're just going to do is to use back substitution 
to find the values of x, y, and z. So this is a combination of elementary row operation and back substitution because in this particular augmented matrix, when we change it into a linear system, we know that we can now solve the linear equation by back substitution. And by using back substitution, our values of x, y, and z will be x equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1, and z equal to 2. And this is how we perform the elementary row operations in solving for the solutions of our linear system.